I want to talk today about drawing resonance structures in organic chemistry. And we're going to look at situations where we have a carbocation or a cation and an anion. And we're going to handle each of those separately. We're going to start by looking at the case where we have a cation. And there are some general guidelines we're going to follow as we draw these resonance structures first. In all of the resonance structures that we draw, we're never going to violate the octet rule. Now, I'm sure you remember from general chemistry that there are some elements that do, on occasion, violate the octet rule when you draw resonance structure for them. We're not going to focus on them in this video because most of the time they're not relevant to the organic structures that we're studying. Next, our resonance structure should only involve sp2 or sp hybridized carbon atoms, in other words, carbon atoms with p orbitals on them, and atoms with lone pairs. And we'll see some examples of that in the examples we look at. And finally, for cations, we're going to move only one pair of electrons at a time. So let's look at an example. And we're going to use as our example this compound that contains both nitrogen and oxygen. And the first resonance of structure I'm going to draw, following my rule, for cations move one pair of electrons at a time is to move these electrons to the nitrogen as shown by this arrow to give me this resonance structure. You'll notice I move the electrons towards the positive charge and I should add that as a caveat to number three here. You're always going to move your electrons towards the positive charge. That makes sense. When we have a cation we're going to move electrons towards the positive area. Now I'm going to draw my next resonance structure by moving these electrons again towards the positive charge, as shown by this arrow, to give me this resonance structure with the positive charge on the carbon that the electrons moved away from. I can draw the new resonance structure based on this starting structure by moving this pair of electrons and this double bond again towards the positive charge as shown by this arrow, to give me this resonance structure with a positive charge on the carbon that the electrons moved away from and right next to this oxygen. And finally, I can draw one more resonance structure where I move the electrons on this double bond towards the, not double bond, excuse me, this lone pair of electrons towards the positive charge, as shown by this arrow, to give me this resonance structure. Now there are a couple of other resonance structures that you may be tempted to draw for a molecule like this. For instance, you may be tempted to take the double bond that's over here and move this pair of electrons towards the positive charge on that nitrogen, as shown by this arrow right here. If we do that, and I'm going to move the electrons to show the product that that arrow is indicating, this structure has a serious problem with it. It has a violation of the octet rule. If we count the number of electrons around the nitrogen, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this violates rule number one here. So we don't want to draw that one. You also might be tempted to do something with this lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen right here. You might be tempted to draw a double bond from the nitrogen to this carbon right here, as shown by this arrow. And when you do that, you might think that the product you get is something like this, and you say to yourself, well, I haven't violated the octet rule on nitrogen, but you need to remember that this carbon right here starts with three hydrogens. It still has three hydrogens on it. We've actually violated two of our guidelines here because number one, we have violated the octet rule on this carbon, but we've also involved in our resonance structure a carbon atom that was not sp2 or sp hybridized. And the reason that we have this guideline is because when you do involve this sp3 hybridized carbon atom, you're going to violate the octet rule. Similarly, if you tried to do something with this terminal double bond, moving it as shown for by this arrow, you might think you would get something like this, but you need to remember there are two hydrogens on this carbon and two hydrogens on this carbon. 
and again by involving an sp3 hybridized carbon in our resonance structure we're violating the octet rule i also want to talk about looking at resonance structures when we have an anion and the rules for an anion are going to be similar to what they were for a cation in fact the first two rules will be the same except for anions we're going to move two pairs of electrons at we move two pairs of electrons each step and we move away from the negative charge. It makes sense that we move electrons towards a positive charge and away from a negative charge, and we move two at a time when we're talking about anions. As an example this time, let's look at this molecule. It's an anion, and I'm going to move two pairs of electrons at a time, one from the lone pair on oxygen down to here to make a double bond, the other away from that new double bond and onto this carbon atom as shown by these arrows. And what we get when we move the electrons in the way shown by the arrows is this, where there's a double bond between the oxygen and the carbon made from these electrons. And the pair of electrons that was in this double bond is now on this carbon. What you'll notice is in this step, I made a double bond and I got a new lone pair. So I still have the same total number of lone pairs and same number of double bonds, it's just that new double bond, new lone pair. We're going to do the same thing again. This lone pair is going to move here to become a double bond. This double bond is going to move onto this carbon to become a lone pair. That's what these arrows indicate. And if I draw the product of what I'm showing with these arrows, I get this. This lone pair has become a double bond. This double bond has become a lone pair. So now I do the same thing again. This lone pair will move here to become a double bond. This double bond will move to this carbon to become a lone pair in the way shown by these arrows. And again, if I draw the product of that, I get this, where this lone pair has become this double bond, and this double bond has become this lone pair. Now, there are a couple of other resonance structures you might be tempted to draw. For instance, you might be tempted to take this double bond and move it to here, and this lone, this double bond become a new lone pair, as shown by these arrows. And if you do that, you would get something that looks like this. And while this doesn't violate any of the rules that we set up above here, we need to look at the charges that we would get for this molecule. In all of the other resonance structures we drew, we only had one charged atom. In this one, we have three charged atoms. And in general, the more charged atoms you have, the poorer resonance contributor it is. And while we haven't talked about the uh, degree that each of our resonance structures contributes to our resonance hybrid, this would be a poor resonance structure because of all of the charged atoms. Finally, you might be tempted to do something with this double bond down here. For instance, moving it here would give you something like this, but you need to remember that this is a sp3 hybridized carbon atom and we never involve sp3 hybridized carbon atoms in resonance structures because you want to remember that there are two other hydrogens here like that and those two other hydrogens are still in the other structure we've drawn which violates the octet rule at this carbon and we don't want to do that so this is not a valid resonance structure, which is why I put the X across it.